Okay, so here's the boat outside with the cover off. Everything unwrapped, as you can see, looks fairly shiny at this sort of distance. Uh, the decks were re-varnished, re-sprayed uh, about three, four years ago. There's a few little nicks on it still. Um, you'd expect that down there from the spinnaker. Uh, a little bit of discoloration on the front there, but you know, nothing that's an issue. That's all tape there, the protective tape that was put there. Um, that's where you tack the jib. That's your stuff full of force tape that goes down inside. All these gubbins here. Just looking at the condition of the deck, you can see the gunnel on this side. There's no discoloration on the gunnel, on the washboard. Washboard's pretty good as well. You know, there's a few little nicks here and there, but nothing that's a problem. Um, there's the mast foot. That was a new mast foot that was put on uh, earlier this year. I think I was going to try and sail and didn't, so that's never been used. Continuing down this gunnel, you see the condition of that, there's no discoloration on that white wood. On the transom, that corner's okay. Transom's all in good condition, these look a bit scruffy but it's just loads of tape on there holding this flap on. Um, on this corner, there's a slight nick there but that's nothing. Uh, coming down this side of the boat, Again, there's no discoloration on this side of the boat. It's all in good condition. Looking at the washboard here. Again, you know, there's a few little scruffs on there, but that's nothing. If you were really keen, you could just flatten that back and re those washboards by hand. Everything's bone dry. The boat's been in the shed now for the last uh, three years. In fact, it's always been stored under cover. It's never been stored at a sailing club. Looking at the whole side deck now and the condition of the other varnish work. There we go, down the inside there. Looking down that side deck, you can see the condition of the varnish work there. Across the back of the transom, again there's a few little superficial nicks there, but it's all the dark wood, so there's no staining of the wood. And again, if you're really keen, just buff that back and re-varnish by hand, just that little bit there. Going down this side again, no damage on that side deck, all the wood's in good condition. Looking at the thwarts, the thwarts the other varnished bit. Again, the only slight damage is there's little nicks here on the back of the thwart, where the ropes obviously run when you're pulling them up and down, these are the control lines. Control lines on the back here, you've got your Cunningham, you've got your shroud tension, which is the pink one, and you've got your forestay, which controls the stuff luff at the front there. So that green one there runs along here onto the shelf, which does all the gubbins on the front there, which is attached by a four to one purchase to this bit of wire here. Okay. Looking at the way it's set up, again, that's your shroud purchase, so that's got a four to one on it. Obviously, it's the standard way of doing it, it's led back to the middle, straight down. So an 8 to 1 on the middle, that's a bit more chunky than a lot of people use. Just look at the section of the blocks as well, these are quite heavy duty Harkin blocks. And then that's led back to the sides, that's double ended as well. So that pink one comes back here, so it's double ended across to the other side there, which reduces the amount of rope you've got in the middle. Uh, coming out of the thwart down here, you've got your jib sheets, as we have on all scorpions, that's your standard way of doing it. And you've got your spinnaker sheets coming up onto the side deck here. Okay. Uh, on the spinnaker sheets, they obviously go back to the back of the boat, as with all scorpions, and back along the sides. And then we've got a bit of overkill here because we've got twinners, it's a standard twinner setup. You've also got reaching cleats on towers, these Harkin cleats, if you want to pull the pole back a foot or so and cleat it off. And you've also got stoppers and knots. I don't know where the stopper is, there's the stopper back there somewhere for your pole forward position as well as having a tight little cleat there. So you could argue that's overdone, but I like it anyway. Uh, this is what I told you about with the um, with the baler, the way the baler works, that bit of string there pulls up the baler on each side and you just put your foot on it to push the baler down, which is a lot quicker and simpler. I won't try and explain everything that goes on here because you've got your pole up, no, no you haven't, you've got your, yeah that's your pole up cleat, 
you've got your fine tune for your jib halyard tension there. You've got the compensator there for the stuff luff system, but I'll explain all that when I hand the boat over. Oh yeah, and you've got your strut kicker here, which obviously goes on the back of the mast. As you can see, they are Harkin carbon blocks. Again, it's, it's slightly, well, it's way over spec, you could say, but big diameter sheaves reduce friction. You've also got carbon tie blocks down here, down there, carbon blocks at the back here, there, carbon cheek block there, carbon blocks on the main sheet, there's one there, that's on the bottom of the boom, and there's one buried inside there which is all taped up and protected up. This is the centre main sheet system, so there's your conventional centre main sheet, and coming out the bottom of that you've got the kicking strap which is when I said it was a single ended kicker. So that is a really good fitting and it's, that's a really, really simple way of managing and using those two controls. I'm just messing around with the kicker on the back of the thwart. Very simple pulley up type, pulley down type thing for your centre board. That's the Mullane centre board that's in the boat. So looking generally at the boat, as we said, the inside of the boat is painted with two pack. It's got a really good non-slip finish on it. There's a little bit of scuffing damage on the back, but you know, none of this is, it's just cosmetics. You look here, there's a few scratches on the back there. And uh, if you look down the side there, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a few cosmetic little scratches and small little cracks in the paint. It's a very hard paint, this stuff, which means it's great for scuff resistance. But if anything flexes, it can crack sometimes. There's a double retainer system for the um, the rudder. This is your safety elastic that goes over the top. It's obviously on the transom. A conventional retaining clip. Uh, what else can I say about this boat? What else can I say about this boat? That's about it really, I think. You know, there's all sorts of fancy things here about extra blocks and cleats for the Spinnaker halyard that allows the crew to pull the Spinnaker halyard up if you want to, perhaps on a really close windy reach, which simplifies things for the helm. Um, and the Spinnaker Halyard would go, would go up through that block there, through that block there, under the thwart, back here, through this turning block, which again is a carbon tie block, and back under the thwart on the other side. So very, everything's conventional, all works the way it's meant to work. Oh yeah, this is your jib sheet car adjustment. If I just move that stuff over there, So as you're hiked on this side, you've got a cleat here, and as you pull this cleat, you adjust the car over there. Obviously it's a Harkin car, it's a Harkin Katai block, and they are Harkin roller, bow, roller cars as well, which is all nice low friction stuff. So there you go, that's the boat.